Hello, I'm Donna Eccleston, Commissioner in Comal County, and you're listening to Texas County Voice, a podcast for all 254 counties. Thank you for listening. Hello and welcome to Texas County Voice. I'm Jody Siebert with the Texas Association of Counties. I'm pleased to have Robert Rees on today's episode. Robert is the Associate Director of the Texas Association of Counties Risk Management Services. Our conversation today will revolve around a presentation Robert developed titled Demystifying AI for County Leaders. Robert gave his presentation at Tax County Management and Risk Conference in March, as well as other venues this year. It provides an overview of the considerations and potential benefits, challenges, best practices, and so on associated with integrating artificial intelligence into county government operations. Welcome to the podcast, Robert. Jody, thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here today. Well, as you note in your presentation, artificial intelligence uh, has been quietly shaping the world around us for years, Uh, but it's only within the past couple of years, mainly with the arrival of chat GPT, (laughs) that AI has fully entered the mainstream. So the benefit of your presentation is it exists in lay terms, and you're coming at it from a layman's perspective. So let's, let's start with the basics. Can you explain what AI is? Yeah, and that really what was the basis of the presentation. Uh, when we look to educate our, our members, we want to make sure that everybody has a good level playing field from which to operate. So when we talk about AI, and, and there's a slide in there that talks about the family of this technology. So AI is the overarching bucket. Uh, and AI really is computer systems that have the ability to 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 learn and adapt and to even reason. Come down one subset, you have this technology called machine learning, and it uses algorithms uh, to learn from a lot of different data sets. And so, again, that's increasing the ability and the output that it can produce. Now we come down one more level to deep learning, which is another type of artificial intelligence. And that type of technology is is kind of a neural network. So if we look at our brain, what it does is it's mimicking that structure. And it's using like a lattice structure to connect and look at vast amounts of data. Then we have generative AI, which as Jody pointed out is, is I think everybody equates to chat GPT. That's mm-hmm. the latest form, the latest iteration, if you will, of AI. It's the hottest. It's what's been uh, blazing the news for the last you know, few years. And that version of AI has the ability to really produce and create novel content in in six modalities. And and it's text, code, audio, image, video, and even some specialization in 3D. So those are really the four buckets that make up AI. Generative AI, which is the, as you mentioned, it's the form of artificial intelligence most of us have become familiar with in the last couple of years. It's generating content, but it's really kind of compiling content as I understand it. Absolutely, so they, it it operates on, it's technically like a large language model that's been fed enormous amounts of data. And depending on the model, and so there's different companies out there that have their own version of this technology, right? Generative AI. And so they feed it large amounts of data up to a certain point in time. And so that's correct when you, interact with it kind of in a chat format, it is really using a mathematical formula to kind of predict what answer your question, right? And synthesize it and produce an output. And and as I mentioned earlier, it can be text, code, audio, even images as well. So how can AI be applied in the context of county government? So I, I, that's fascinating um, because I think there are a lot of applications. And, and when I speak, it's never from a point of convincing one way or the other to use it or not to use it. But what's so striking to me is, you know, we had a story in in the county magazine, Presidio County, one of the first counties in the nation to already start using AI technology. They're using it in their 911 emergency dispatch for translation services. They have a lot of Spanish callers. And so this service has the ability in real time to translate the call from Spanish to English. 
And what was interesting is that the county employee talked about the efficiency gained. Instead of responding what took 10 minutes, it now takes a few minutes. And, and that's just one example of how it's being used. Other areas that I've seen other use cases are HR to, to do repetitive tasks, to post uh, job postings, uh, to scan applicants, uh, those resumes that come in. Uh, we've already seen it in traffic, uh, monitoring traffic systems, cameras. Uh, artificial intelligence has been embedded in there for some time as well. I see it now permeating into budget. Tyler Technologies, a big firm that, that operates and interacts with our, our members in a lot of different ways, is, is buying a lot of different companies that are integrating artificial intelligence for budget and redaction. What considerations should county officials keep in mind when implementing AI technologies? And what are some of the first steps they should take? I think for me, the, the, the big thing is educating yourself on a, the different types of technologies out there, the different models, what they can and can't do. And so when you talk about what are some of the limitations, it's known that these models are, some of them have what's called hallucinations. So they can make outputs based on what they've been trained on and provided. And they may not always be true or factual, right? It tends to produce some things, but it's upon the user to still verify that output. So that's what I would say, always verify the output based on what you're getting. This technology can be biased in its response and output. Well, how could that be, you might ask? Well, because it's only been trained on a certain set of data up to a certain point in time. So you have to kind of understand that and evaluate the content that it's spitting out. I think another area that we talk a lot about it is data privacy and security. So many individuals are interacting with it. I interact with it. And we have to understand that every time we are interacting with it, that system is keeping that prompt, keeping that data, and learning from it. And so if you were to place sensitive, private, or confidential information, these models, these technologies are not subject to um, data and privacy regulations. So you may be inadvertently uh, sharing data that shouldn't be shared. So that's, that's a really, really big one from a cybersecurity and a data privacy standpoint. I think also the other thing that we, you look at is just the lack of transparency. Some people feel that uh, it can be unpredictable, so just be cautious with it. Um, those are just a few tips. Yeah, the biases and uh, privacy issues are interesting to me. I, I think those are a couple of the biggest risk involved, right? Because the algorithms and the, and the learning of artificial intelligence, it's, it's only learning what it's been taught by its creators. Correct. But it's improving every day, and things are moving at light speed. So that's, that's another real challenge, isn't it, for governments? And with something that is moving so quickly, how can governments keep up with it? I, I think and that is what we're seeing now. If you look at any space, any vendor, you see the word AI in it, because that's just the buzzword, right? Uh, this now has AI, because that is it, it part of a marketing Employee, if you will. I think for governments, they've got to take a very, um, just a pragmatic approach. And what I would say there is, if you're considering AI in your county, and, and GovTech, which is an online site, does a great job of, of giving some steps to do that, I would say start small. Uh, what do I mean by that is, if you're going to use AI, test it with a small group of stakeholders. Test it internally with your employees before if at all, it's gonna be open to the public. You wanna know what that system is going to do. Uh, don't rush into it and make sure you ask your questions. If you're partnering with a vendor that has generative AI or AI in, in a technology, ask the questions and what are the questions? What I would say is, how is our data, our county data, going to be used to train this generative AI model? If they say yes, I think a good follow-up question is, okay, where is this data going to be kept? County governments have, have some laws uh, that they want to visit with their county attorney on that requires that their data be kept here in the United States. So you want to be uh, mindful of that as well. I think a best practice there is that if you are going to use generative AI in some shape or form in your county, whether internal facing or external, you want to make sure that there's guardrails around the privacy, uh, security of that data, 
Uh, and most importantly, that you're reading that vendor contract, because as they say, the devil is in the details and you absolutely want to know there. If you are going to make something public facing, address the privacy and, and security of it uh, by letting people know, don't play sensitive or confidential information. It should not be disclosed. Remember, it's your system, it's your data, which means that it's also your responsibility and potential liability if that data gets out mm. one way or the other. And then the last point that I would say is uh, be transparent. Uh, if you plan to use generative AI and it is going to be outward facing, such as a chat bot, which is a version of generative AI, let people know that they're interacting with the machine with their conversations. What do I mean by that is there's a case uh, from the West Coast recently that involved litigation because a human was interacting with this chat bot and there was a discussion going back and forth and they actually thought that it was a human on the other side providing the responses. And so what the chat bot produced was erroneous versus what the policy was and so litigation ensued. And so that's what I would say, be transparent, make it clear, is this a human interaction or a machine interaction? Yeah, that transparency, that goes into building public trust because I suspect there's a lot of public skepticism about AI. So how can uh, county governments build that public trust? I think first off, it starts with, with having a good policy that addresses uh, A, how the county is going to use it, what is it used for, and then the safeguards that they're taking in place to protect citizens' data, such as our data being stored in the United States. We don't allow the history of our interactions to be stored or tracked by that platform. Verifying all the outputs, right? Using appropriate disclaimers uh, when, when being interacted with. But more than anything, I think it's training the user, whether it's the public or, yeah. or internal, the employees, making sure that they understand as with any technology, it has that good side, but it can also be used for, for bad if not used properly. Yeah, the training of uh, the workforce, that's key. So you have best practices, uh, suggestions for how to train your county workforce? Yeah, it, it, I, for me, I think it's very similar to, to cyber. Uh, and, and I see this, uh, that is the struggle, right, with, with any, any organization and industry is the technology is out there. Do we put a policy that outright bans it, prohibits it, or do we put a policy in place that has those guardrails, right? Uh, if you're going to put a policy in place, I would say keep it simple, make it broad and flexible so that it can adapt. I would never put a policy that names you can or can't use chat GPT. What if that changes tomorrow? You want to address it more as generative AI. Um, I think the training has to involve letting users know what are the dangers, making it imperative on them to verify the output that's in there, uh, making them aware that that model could have some biases in there, um, not to put sensitive information in there. Uh, and there are some digital tools. There's something called a DAP, digital adoption uh, platform. That's a little bit of a technical technology there. Um, that helps organizations warn employees of their responsibilities when they're using AI. Yeah, banning AI doesn't seem practical at this point. It's with us. It's here to stay. So finding a way to use it responsibly and effectively seems the, the proper route to go. Absolutely, because you can ban it from, let's say, a, a county asset, a laptop that's issued to you, but you can now get those technologies on your phone, right? Both Gemini and ChatGPT have apps, right? And so yeah, that's exactly right. That highlights the point that sometimes when we go with, with the stance of, no, you can't use it, people are going to be curious, and, and they're going to use it, it regardless. Mm -hmm. Well, Robert, you've, you've mentioned that AI should be approached in some ways like uh, cyber, the way we approach cybersecurity. So can you talk a little bit about that intersection? between AI and cybersecurity and, and how we approach both? Absolutely. So I think that both share that aspect of just hyper evolution. Um, cybersecurity, very dynamic, very fluid. I would say AI, in my opinion, is even more so. I, I just see it evolving every day. AI, its ability, uh, that technology is being used in cybersecurity for more advanced scanning uh, more uh, pattern analysis of threat actors. And so those are just two examples of how AI is being used in cybersecurity for detection 
and prevention. But guess what? The threat actors have access to the same technology. And so they are weaponizing AI in social engineering schemes, in phishing schemes, in writing code. Now, uh, of late, the, the, the predominant uh, generative AI uh, models have, have put in some more security measures in place. But as, as cybersecurity evolves, these threat actors have actually come up with their own version of Gen AI. Uh, some of them is called K, uh, Chaos GPT, Worm GPT. Those are bad versions of GPT technology that is aimed at uh, hacking and things of that nature. So the cross-section is absolutely there. You almost need AI to detect AI, AI to sort of offset AI attacks. It's going to be with us. It's going to continue to hyper-accelerate our cybersecurity threats that we're seeing. AI is here to stay. There's no doubt about that. And it's, I, I don't think we can even imagine the ways that it can benefit us in the future or the ways that it can harm us. Learn to use it. Be careful using it, I think, is the bottom line. I couldn't agree more. I think we're going to have to, it's, it's about learning to coexist, understand it, understand the, uh, the pitfalls, but also uh, what are some of the good things that can come from it. And I think that's where we're at. Uh, not just in the United States, but but globally, we're trying to find our way through this uh, uh, disruptive technology. Where it goes remains to be seen. Uh, previously, we've had two AI winners where kind of AI levels off because of a number of variations, as any technology is. Some predict that uh, we will hit the third AI winter pretty soon. Others say, no, we're we're going to continue on this trend of of seeing AI just continue to permeate and, and, and evolve. So more to, more to come, as, as Paul Harvey said, uh, more to the rest of the story. That's right. Well, thank you, Robert. I appreciate your time. Thank you. That wraps up today's episode of Texas County Voice. Thank you for tuning in. And a special thank you to Robert Ruiz for joining us and sharing his insights on artificial intelligence in county government. A link to Robert's presentation Demystifying AI for County Leaders, can be found on our show page on county.org. You'll find Texas County Voice under the Resources tab on county.org's homepage. As we've learned, AI's rapid evolution brings both opportunities and risk. In addition to Robert's presentation, you will also find on the podcast show page a link to the National Association of Counties recently released report and toolkit to help counties consider, adopt, and regulate the use of generative AI. The report is the work of NACO's AI Exploratory Committee, which was co-chaired by Travis County Judge Andy Brown. Peter Crary, Senior Manager of Technology here at TAC, was a member of the committee, which spent the past year studying emerging AI policies and practices. Again, thank you for tuning in to Texas County Voice. We'll see you next time.